Hey guys, let's talk a bit about security of our applications. So there exists this open world application security project of us that defines different standards and methodologies for securing your applications. And thinking about the world of Ruby on Rails, I know Greg Molnar, who is an OSCP certified penetration tester. Now, what does this mean? It means uh, uh, offensive security certified professional. So a person that you can hire to try to hack into your uh, software. And uh, if he uh, successfully hacks into your software, he will provide a report uh, of uh, what can be improved in uh, your software and if he did not manage to successfully hack uh, your software he will uh, uh, well provide you with uh, an uh, OSCP certification so he will say that uh, your application is kind of uh, quite bulletproof uh, and this can uh, uh, from hacks and this can help you sell to corporate clients so the process of uh, doing this kind of uh, uh, hacking that uh, you're hired to do is called penetration testing and uh, we are going to have a look at a few things that uh, are commonly mentioned by penetration testers in uh, uh, Ruby on Rails applications. So one thing is uh, access control. So broken access control. So uh, basically giving a user a list of all devices that he is logged in with and uh, the possibility to log out of a device remotely. So, for example, Facebook has this feature. I go to my account center and I go to where you are logged in. I click on it. I see that I'm logged in from two devices. If I click on one of the devices, I will see where I'm logged in and I will have the possibility to log out of this device. Let's see how we can add this kind of feature in the Ruby on Rails application. Here I actually have it already built. So here I'm logged in from the Safari browser. Here I'm logged in from the Edge browser. I go to the slash logins and here I see that I'm logged in from a Safari browser and from the current session that is from the Edge browser. I go to logins here. I see that uh, I'm logged in from Safari. Now, if I click on disconnect, I will refresh the other tab. And here you see, I have been remotely disconnected. So this way you can log out of any device that you uh, possibly forgot to log out uh, from. Now I log in once again, I refresh. You see I'm logged into two devices. Now I will log out on my own and I'm logged in with just one device. So this is uh, sometimes considered that an important security feature that you should have uh, in your application. And let's see how we can build this. Uh, I'm going to start with a basic application where I have just device installed. I will run uh, RailsDB rollback. Now uh, I'll go to the main branch. And here I have uh, this uh, basic application. Let me restart the server. Okay, so here is my basic application that has uh, only device and a couple of pages, the home page and the admin page. And within the admin page requires a user to be signed in. So uh, let's try adding this kind of uh, logins or sessions or devices uh, manager to our application. So first of all, we are going to start with adding a login stable. Let's uh, say Rails generate uh, scaffold login. So a login is going to belong to a user, so user references it's going to have a device id uh, it is going to have uh, uh, an ip address and user agent okay let's say rails to be my crate now i will go to the user model and say that a user has many logins and uh, now, how are we going to uh, create a login when uh, a user signs in, remove a login when a user signs out, and ensure that a login exists when the user is trying to navigate the application? Let's go to our application controller and just uh, write it down. We are going to need to have something like uh, def uh, create login, then uh, def uh, destroy login. So this is going to happen when the uh, user signs in. Uh, this is when user signs out. And we're going to have another thing to check if uh, there exists a login. So uh, uh, def require login. Okay. So uh, require login is going to be a before action. So before 
action require login if there is a current user. And what is require login going to do? It's going to check if uh, the user is logged in from this device. So uh, let's uh, let's start by creating this create login action. When a user signs in, we are going to create a login in the login database. Uh, we're going to say uh, uh, current login equals current user dot logins dot create device ID is going to be something. Then we are going to have uh, IP address is going to be something and user agent. We're going to store this. Now, where can we get them? Let's uh, see what we have in our request. Whenever we make a request, we are going to have the IP address, user agent, and we're going to generate a device ID. Let's uh, put a debugger here. And uh, let's uh, try to invoke this create login uh, uh, when we sign in. Now, the easiest way to invoke it can be using the device after sign in uh, path 4. So, def after sign in path 4 resource. It will be, let's say, root path. But we are also going to invoke create login. So, uh, let's go back and try to log in. Uh, what accounts do I have? Okay, let me uh, register. So I'm clicking sign up and I hit the binding. Okay, I had the bin dev running, not just rail server, so uh, it's not going to work. I'm going to just try, have to try to restart running the rail server. Okay, now once again. Okay, email has been taken. Let's log in with this email. Login. And uh, yeah, I have this undefined method require login. I forgot an I. Let's try once again. Login. Okay, now I hit the binding. So I'm inside this create login. What do we have? I have IP address that I can get from request. Request dot remote. IP and I can get user agent from request.user agent. And uh, let's uh, generate a unique uh, ID for the device. So let's say device ID can be something like uh, digest sha256.hex uh, digest. And uh, we're going to generate it based on uh, the uh, request user agent and request remote IP. So let's say uh, request dot user agent concatenated with request dot remote IP. Now I'm not doing it as a secure hex because a secure hex would always be different, but this is going to be always the same uh, for the same uh, user agent and remote IP. So this is going to be the device ID. Let's uh, paste it here. So we are going to uh, create a login and we're going to store the device ID in our session. We're going to say session device ID equals device ID. Okay, now let's uh, quit and start the server once again. So uh, I'm going to log in. Uh, undefined method IP address, yeah, because I should say uh, request.remote IP and uh, request user agent. Okay, let's try again. Uh, login. I'm logged in and let's see if uh, a login has actually been created. I will go to slash logins and you see a login has been uh, created. Okay, so I managed to create a login and uh, let's uh, require a login to be present to be logged in. Uh, let's uh, uh, say we're going to find a login. So I will say uh, uh, current login uh, equals uh, current user dot logins dot find uh, uh, find by device 
ID, the device ID that we have stored in the session. So there should be like a device ID stored in the session from uh, our previous login. So it will be session device ID. And uh, if there is a current login, everything is okay. But if current login is uh, nil, then we're going to send the user out. So sign out, that is a device method, uh, current user, and we'll say redirect uh, to a new user session path, alert uh, device not uh, recognized. Okay, let's uh, try navigating our application a bit now. Uh, let's say I will uh, log in with this uh, device. I click on login and you see I get this device not recognized. Why am I getting this? Because uh, require login happens before after signing path is uh, triggered. So uh, I have no chance to actually uh, create a login. I get logged out before this after sending path is triggered. So one way to work around this would be adding a return here so that this uh, require login that is not uh, trigger on uh, the sign in action on the device sign in. So I will say return if uh, controller path uh, equals device sessions and the uh, action name equals create so uh, when logging in we are not going to require login this kind of makes sense let's see if this works now i'm going to try to log in and i managed to log in let's see how many logins i have i have two logins i will uh, try to log out of uh, this uh, safari device uh, destroy login I refresh and you see I have been logged out. So it kind of works. Uh, yeah, looks nice. Uh, now, uh, let's try logging in once again. I'm logged in. Again, I have two logins. I will log out on my own and I still have two logins. So I need to manually destroy the login when I'm uh, uh, signing out. So uh, I'm going to say uh, current user logins uh find by device id session device id uh, if we find it we're going to destroy it and we're going to uh, set uh, the session device id to nil so i'm going to say session dot delete uh, device id now how can i trigger this uh, destroy login i cannot do it in the after sign out path because uh, I will already not have a current user then I hit the after sign out path for device so I'm going to actually have to hijack that device sessions controller for this and uh, to do it I'm going to generate the device sessions controller I'm going to say uh, rails generate uh, device controllers I'm going to namespace it within users and uh, I'm going to generate only sessions. I'm going to update my roots. So instead of just having device for users, I'm going to use our custom sessions controller. Let's open the custom sessions controller. And here I have uh, the new create and destroy actions that I can override. And inside destroy, uh, before running the actual destroy actions, I'm going to uh, run destroy login like this let's uh, see if it works now I'm going to log in once again I get device not recognized why do I get this because uh, now I'm not using device sessions I'm using the uh, uh, users slash sessions so uh, instead of this, I'm going to have users slash sessions. Let's try once again. Okay, it worked. And uh, now I have two logins. I'm going to log out here. I refresh this one. I still have two logins. This doesn't look right. Let's uh, 
Let's try removing this one manually. I will again click on login. So I have two logins. I log out. I have one login. Okay, so now it uh, worked. Looks good. And uh, also, you don't have to have this create login inside the Altesanian path. You can also move it to the sessions controller since we have created it. So we could do it somehow like uh, dev create. So we are going to say super do resource. And we're going to run uh, create login uh, if resource dot persisted. In our case, resource is user. And now we don't need the after sending path anymore, or at least the create login that we put inside it. And let's see if uh, everything works now. So uh, just in case, I will restart the server. And uh, here I am. I have a couple of tabs. I'm going to log in here. I have two sessions. I will uh, show the login, uh, remove it. I have logged out. I log in here. I go to slash uh, logins. And let me try to remove this uh, edge uh, browser. EDG. So show and destroy. And I have logged out of uh, this other browser while staying logged into this one. So it kind of works. Uh, obviously, you would want to clean up your uh, uh, logins controller. So here you don't need most of these actions. You only need the index and uh, destroy. And uh, you are going to allow a user to access only his own uh, data. So we're not going to have all logins. I will have current user dot logins. And here it's going to be current user dot logins find. Now we don't need to respond with different formats. So uh, it's just going to be a redirect. Here we have cleaned up uh, the controller. Let's also clean up the login views. We don't need the uh, most of this, let's uh, just leave the login uh, index. Mm. And uh, what do we have? We have, uh, uh, we want to have a remove button straight on the index. Let's uh, add it. We don't need all these. We are just going to add a equals button to delete uh, login path at login method delete. Okay, so here we have the delete button and let's also uh, not allow the user to log out from the current device that he is uh, in. So we can log out of other devices, we cannot log out from the current device. Let's go to slash logins and let's display the current device. How can we uh, do this? Uh, let's say if login dot device ID equals session device ID, then we're going to say that this is the current device. Else we're going to have the button to delete. Let's see. Here we have the delete button. Here we have the current device button. Okay, it looks quite good. And let's uh, add some additional information about the specific device that we are logged in into. And we can do it based on our user agent. Let's know whether this is a tablet or a desktop or a mobile phone. We can do it with using the gem device detector. So gem device detector. So based on the user agent, it can give us different additional data. Let's install this gem. Bundle at the device detector. I made a typo. Let's see if the gem has been uh, added to the gem file. Okay, 
I must have typed it correctly this time. And uh, let's get some additional information about uh, our device. So uh, uh, let's uh, run the device detector somewhere, um, somewhere here. We can uh, say equals uh, device uh, details login dot user agent. Let's create this method device details in a helper login helper dev device details based on a login. Uh, yeah, based on the user agent. And let's put a, a debugger here. So uh, I'm going to start the Rails server. And here I am in the debugger and I have the information about the user agent. And uh, we can run the device equals device detector dot uh, new based on this user agent. And we have uh, some additional information. Let's run device. And we can get the dot uh, name. So Safari dot uh, OS name dot uh, uh, device type. So we know that it is Safari Mac desktop. Some good additional metadata. Let's uh, display this data also uh, in uh, our helper. I'm going to say we have device uh, name, device OS type, and device uh, device type. We're going to display them. Uh, how did I invoke uh, device detector? Uh, dot join uh, with a slash, for example. Okay, let's quit now. And now when I refresh, you see, uh, instead of just displaying this user agent information that is not very useful, I can display that this is Safari Mac desktop and this is Edge Mac desktop. Uh, so, yeah, that looks much better. Uh, and just this way, you can allow uh, a user to see his uh, logins, all the devices that a user is uh, logged in with and look out of other devices. Here I see that... Uh, yeah, let's just add some border because it's not really visible. And let's remove the create action. We can't really create it. Okay, here we go. So here we see information about our logged in devices. I see that uh, this is the current device and I can log out from another device. I clicked on log out. Here I refresh, I'm logged out. Uh, if I log in again, the device has been added. If I log out, the device has been removed. So looks quite good. And uh, just like this, you can allow a user to uh, have a list of all the devices that uh, he's logged in with and uh, remotely log, log out from another device, just like Facebook does it here. And your application is going to be uh, considered more secure. So thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.